Matthew chapter number 13 is a wonderful chapter in the scriptures. This chapter is a chapter of parable. A parable is an earthly story with a hidden heavenly meaning. And Jesus often taught in parables so people could grasp it, so they could understand it. Can you imagine if Jesus spoke in heavenly language? We wouldn't be able to understand it. But he broke it down and he used natural things and things around us that we could understand. And then when the Holy Ghost in, moved inside of us, when we got born again, we could discern and we could, you know, find application for it. And so in Matthew chapter 13, I want to visit one of the parables. But we'll begin reading in verse number 24. The Bible says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, Ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, uh, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly do thank you, Lord, for the good sweet spirit that's in the house of God tonight. Thank you for every song that's been sung. Thank you, Lord, for all the good testimonies, the work you've already done in our midst. God, we bless you for it. Now, Father, I pray you'd speak to us now from the Scriptures. May you grow our faith. May we draw closer to God. And may you do a work in each and every life here tonight. Bless those working with our young people over on the other side. I pray you'd bless our young people. I pray for them when they go to camp this week that, God, you'd do something special for them. I pray they'd come back fired up and ready for revival meeting. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd fire us up and help us to get ready for revival meeting. Bless now, meet every need of every heart. Be with Miss Sonny tomorrow during surgery. God, certainly touch her and help her through that. And God, be with Miss Crystal and help hers and, and meet every other need and every other prayer request. Father, we'll bless you for it. Use this unworthy vessel again, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We find the book of Matthew displays the Lord Jesus as the king. Matthew is a book that was written to the Jews. A lot of people assume because it's in the New Testament, it was written to the church. And by the way, all Scripture... Uh, is given for inspiration. Uh, all Scripture will grow us. All Scripture will help us. Uh, all Scripture and its contents uh, will grow our faith in the Lord. Uh, but a lot of times people get uh, things a little confused uh, when they try to apply uh, the book of Matthew to the church. For example, in chapter 24, uh, the Bible says, He that endure to the end shall be saved. Uh, that's not how we save. We're not saved because we endure. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's written to the Jews. Uh, Matthew 24 is talking about the great tribulation period. Uh, it's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, it's dealing with those Jews during the tribulation, the 144,000 uh, that will endure the tribulation, uh, not take the mark of the beast, uh, put their faith in God, and they'll endure uh, 
and they will be saved because of that. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, uh, here we find the Lord's talking again. He's dealing with the Jews. He's dealing with the kingdom of heaven. He's not dealing with the church age. Uh, he's dealing uh, 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 with uh, uh, the great white throne judgment at the end of this. I understand all the, uh, uh, the context of the scripture, but there is a thought I want to glean from tonight. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the sowing. Uh, we find in verse number 24, uh, the Bible says, and he put uh, and a parable, another parable put unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Uh, can I say the seed is a picture of the word of God? Uh, thanks be unto God, we got good seed here. Uh, I don't need any other seed. Uh, there's no better seed than this. Uh, I remember my granddaddy always put forth a garden, uh, and my granddaddy always uh, uh, sowed silver queen corn uh, and half runner beans. In his mind, there wasn't anything better than half runner beans uh, and silver queen corn. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what's in my mind, it's what's in my heart. I'm glad for the word of God. It's forever settled in heaven. Uh, I'm glad it's inspired. It's God breathed. Uh, I don't look for another. Uh, uh, but my dear friends, uh, just like he told Haggai, uh, why is there yet seed in the barn? Uh, my dear friends, the seed doesn't do any good if we keep it here. Uh, we got to get it out into the field. Uh, when it gets out in the field, it'll produce fruit. And what a blessing. Uh, we can rest assured we've got good seed. Let's get it out and let's plant it. Uh, what a blessing. I appreciate all those come out every Monday night uh, and take out the gospel tracts and take out the literature uh, and hang it on doors and plant it in the field. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, folks, uh, 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 preacher friends of mine marvel. Say, how come you have so many visitors? Because we got folks taking the seed to the field. That's why... Uh, God honors it. Uh, so we see uh, the sowing. Uh, 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 but listen, that wasn't the only thing that was sowed. Look again at verse number 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Can I say, no matter how hard we work, the enemy's working just as hard, if not harder. Can I say, the enemy has uh, more opportunity than we do. Uh, let me just say this. How many of you are not ashamed to say you're conservative in your political viewpoints? Is anybody liberal? Because I want to point you out. If you're liberal, you scare me to death, huh? We're conservative by nature. The Bible makes us conservative. Uh, but can I say this? Uh, people say all the time to me, they say, well, how come uh, 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 we don't have folks that stand up and voice our opinions and do everything? What voice do we have? What conservative outlet do we have? The liberals own all the media. Hmm? The closest thing we got is Twitter. Not all the time can you rely on that. And not everybody has Twitter. We don't have a conservative voice. Uh, I'm thankful after what happened uh, uh, the other day, we didn't burn down cities. And by the way, the only reason they burned down cities a few years ago because they got paid to do it and they knew there'd be no ramification. If we'd have went and rioted, we'd all been in jail. Uh, because the law does apply to us, just not to them. I said that to say this. The enemy has a whole lot more opportunities because he owns the media. He owns everything outside these walls. And he works overtime to plant tares among the wheat. Every time you pass out a gospel track, he'll make certain they hear some ideology uh, that is hell-bent that will keep them from trusting in Christ. Amen. My dear friends, uh, take refuge in this. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Right. I am not discouraged because the enemy has more opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'm not discouraged at all because we have God. That might help some of you, huh? As I told Miss Noreen, Miss Norma Jean, if God be for us, who can be against us? Huh? Little as much when God's in. Just keep planting seed, huh? Everybody remember the story of Johnny, Johnny Appleseed? I don't know if he wore a metal hat, a pan on his head or not. I don't know. That's what they say, he wore a pot on his head, huh? I don't know if he did or not. You know, over the years, tails get bigger and things happen, huh? You know, uh, 
Uh, uh, I've read the real account of uh, Wyatt Earp and Dodge City. It's a whole lot different than the movies portrayed him. But anyway, can I say this? They said Johnny Appleseed just went all over, just passing, just thrown out seed. Well, there's apple trees all over. I don't know if that's the case or not. But all I can tell you this, just keep throwing out seed. Uh, you throw out enough seed, some of it's going to yield some fruit. Huh? We see the sowing. Notice the subsequences. Notice the disparity. Verse 26, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Can I say you can bank on it, neighbor? When God gets to blessing and when fruit gets to showing up, the enemy will have something to show up too. Hmm? Uh, matter of fact, I, I, I promise you, after what some of you made up your mind and your heart to do this morning in the service, and uh, by some of you minding the Lord, by the way, we couldn't have had tonight's service had we not had this morning service. And had some of you not uh, been obedient tonight, we wouldn't have enjoyed what we got tonight. But listen, the enemy took note of all that. And you mark her down. He's going to do everything in his power to discourage you this week. He will. Huh? And when God gets to blessing and adding to the church, you mark her down, the devil, he'll slip in a, he'll slip in a booger. Not everybody comes to church comes to church for the right motive. Not everything that grew in that field grew in that field because of good seed. Hmm? Amen. You just mark her down. Uh, there'll be some disparity. Not everybody comes to church with the right spirit. Not everybody comes to church in order to hear from heaven and let it enhance their life. Uh, 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 some uh, have ulterior motives. Hmm? You say, what do you do about that? Well, I'm glad you ask. Notice the sensibleness. Look in verse number 28. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. Notice he had discernment. Uh, he didn't say, well, I don't know, I guess tares just grew up. No, he knew an enemy had sowed those. He's got some sense about him. He's got some discernment. An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Notice uh, the servants want to react. You've got to be careful. Sometimes it's better to wait and discern what God says than to react. You might do more damage reacting than you will uh, waiting on God. Be still and know that I'm God. Uh, look what he said in verse number uh, uh, 29. But he said, Nay, uh, lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Uh, a lot of times if you're not careful, uh, 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 you'll want to react and you'll want to do something uh, about a situation not knowing the damage you might do in reacting. Notice he had some discernment. Notice the master of the field knew what to do. Hmm? Can I say, the Lord always knows how to handle the enemy and handle the terrors. And can I say, the Lord gives his man discernment sometimes on how to handle the tares. Uh, the good thing is, we got a good God that knows all things. Uh, now notice the separating verse number 30. We'll get to the thought. Verse number 30, he said, let, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say unto the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat unto my barn. Can I say at harvest time, He'll separate the wheat from the chaff. Can I say there's coming a harvest time and God's going to take care of all of it. But notice that the tares, he said, bind them in bundles to burn them. The tares were bound and burnt while the wheat was blessed and in the barn. What a blessing to be on God's side, huh? What a blessing. We're going to the house one of these days. What a blessing, huh? I'm, I'm interested, if you, if you look back verse 25, I'm interested in this. But while men slept, his enemy came. I'm interested in that thought. Listen, hear me now. There's some people been fighting, fighting hell by the inch lately. There's some, if you haven't, you will. 
one thing the enemy don't want to happen, he don't want, to ha he don't want a seven-week revival happening around here. He don't want to see God move around here. He don't want to see people saved around here. He don't want to see folks getting help around here. He's really upset with some of you that got some help today. Uh, and uh, 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 you've got to be careful because he, uh, he doesn't sleep. And this is my thought. Just because the enemy is quiet doesn't mean he's asleep. Just because the enemy's quiet doesn't mean he's asleep. Thing might, things might be going pretty good at your house. That don't mean the devil don't have you in his bullseye. Hmm? Things might be going pretty good at the church house. Don't mean the devil isn't trying to sow some tares. Just because he's quiet doesn't mean that he's asleep. Matter of fact, when he's quiet, you better get real weary. Did you ever notice right before a big storm it gets real still? It gets real still. You know, throughout the day, there'll be a nice breeze, and you'll start seeing clouds rolling. But right before it hits, the trees quit moving. Everything gets real calm and quiet. Just because it's quiet don't mean the enemy's asleep. Matter of fact, it might mean he's about ready to unleash something big. Huh? Now, listen. Let me give you some things about our enemy tonight. Can I say, first of all, our enemy is patient. He's patient. Now, we don't know. I have no idea how long Adam was on the earth before God made Eve. It had to be a while. He named all the vegetation. He named all the animals. He, he walked with God. He knew, I mean, he, he had a lot to do before Eve showed up. And when he looked at everything this world had to offer, he wasn't satisfied. God put him to sleep, took out one of his ribs, uh, gave him Eve. Uh, and we don't know how long Adam and Eve were together uh, before uh, the tempter came. But make, make no mistake, he was patient and he waited for the right time. Our enemy is patient. He's a lot more patient than we are. He waits for the right time to strike. He's a patient enemy. Can I say something about this? He not only seeks for that opportune time because he's patient, he's persistent. He don't give up easily. You may be able to resist him and he'll flee from you, but make no mistake, he's persistent. He'll come back. You go study Matthew chapter number 4 when Jesus went into the wilderness. He's led by the Spirit after he was baptized in the River Jordan. He went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted. He communed with God. He's about ready to uh, uh, start his earthly ministry. And the Bible says the devil came and tempted him. Uh, three times he tempted him. Uh, he came when Jesus was at his physically weakest point uh, in his flesh. Uh, he came to Jesus when he was hungry. He came to Jesus when he was tired. Uh, he came to Jesus uh, and he offered Jesus uh, uh, bread. He said, come on, these stones be made bread. Why? Because he knew Jesus was hungry. Uh, he went and took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, cast yourself down. Uh, and he misquoted scripture. Uh, that's what the devil always does. Uh, he'll give you just a little portion. Uh, give you a little bit of uh, uh, something to make it sound real good. Uh, he's persistent. Uh, and the Bible said every time Jesus said it is written, uh, he does defeated him with the word. He resisted him. Uh, and the Bible said the devil fled from him uh, for a season. If he's bold enough to tempt the Son of God uh, and come back and tempt him again uh, and come back and tempt him again, you think he's worried about us? Amen. You may resist him today, but that, that, that don't mean he's asleep. He's persistent. He's patient. Can I say this? He's proficient. The devil's a seasoned devil. And let me just go on record saying this. He's taken down mightier men and women than you and us. He's handled bigger and better folks than us and took them down. I do believe the Bible said that David was a man after God's very own heart. Yet David fell to sin. Hmm. 
Can I say? He's a seasoned devil. He has honed his craft. By the way, Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. We know how he works and how he operates, but he still gets people. He's not only seasoned, he's skillful. Hmm. Listen. If you only go to a gun range once or twice a year and only shoot 20 rounds, that doesn't make you a marksman. But if you've got two ranges in your own backyard and you, you, uh, 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 you know, take your brass and you, you know, fill your own brass and you have your own ammo armory and you shoot hundreds of rounds an hour, you're probably pretty proficient. Can I say a marksman not only knows how to aim at the target, he also knows how to discern which way the wind's blowing. He also knows uh, uh, how to aim to where the target's going to be, not necessarily where it's at. Very proficient. Can I say, the devil has honed his sights in, and he knows how to use his armament. Hmm? You know what's sad? God's given us an armor, but we don't use it very often. Why do you think Paul told us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand our enemy? Can I say he's seasoned? He's skillful. And can I say this? He's slick. He just, he just wants you to let up. All you got to do is let up. And Brother Tommy, he don't take an inch. He'll take it all. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Yeah. See, the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill your very joy for the Lord. He wants to steal or rob you of anything that God has blessed you with. And he wants to destroy your testimony before men because he doesn't want anybody else to get saved because of your life for God. You know why we need revival? So we can let our little light shine. Hmm? Listen, this whole world is absolutely insane about sports heroes and about Hollywood people and about political figures who are all wicked, profane, but because they can shoot or because they can smile pretty or because of whatever, the world goes goo-goo over them. You know why they go goo-goo over them? Because they haven't seen anything out of the church world that causes them to say, wow, look at what Jesus can do. Hmm? He's a lot better than a football player or basketball player or baseball player. He's a lot better than an actor. He's the real deal. And we ought to truly get on fire for God. But make no mistake, the devil's slick. Can I say he's not only patient, persistent, proficient, he's poisonous. Listen, we got folks in our church that have really been going through some things. I told Miss Annette Thursday and Friday, no matter what I touched, it fell apart, no matter what. I mean, no matter what. I touched, it failed Thursday and Friday. Huh? I know other folks have had problems. I'm talking about big problems. I just had little problems. Huh? I tried to take lug nuts off of a car. I mean, that's not a real hard t t You've been doing it for years. It's not a big hard deal, is it? Huh? I got a compressor and I got an impact wrench. Hit that thing, zoom, zoom. Put it on the car, nothing. I mean, nothing. Nothing. I couldn't do anything right. They say, what are you trying to say, preacher? Listen, the devil make you feel like you're a failure at little things. 
so that you won't trust God for big things. Mm. And he's poisonous. But there's folks in our church he has really jumped on. He has really attacked them. But he might not have attacked you yet. It might be real quiet at your house. Uh, just because it's quiet don't mean he's asleep. Can I say he's poisonous? He has poisonous darts. That's why we need the shield of faith to quench those fiery darts. They're poisonous. Huh? Mm, do you ever see them uh, blow dart guns that those aborigines and those had? They dip them in poison. They shoot that dart in you. Get in your bloodstream. You're dead. Can I say the dart didn't kill them? The poison did. And can I say he keeps shooting at you and shooting at you and shooting at you and shooting at you. Just hoping some of his poison can get in you. He's got poisonous darts. He's got poisonous devices, poisonous snares, poisonous traps that he can hook you in. Hmm? Did you ever wonder why fish are stupid? Think about it. They got the whole pond, the whole river, the whole lake. But it just takes something little shiny with a hook on it and they go for it every time. Well, don't laugh at fish. The devil puts little shiny things with hooks on them all the time. People fall for it. As it goes, hook, line, and sinker. Hmm? Won't be long, you'll be in his net. He's got poisonous darts, poisonous devices, and he has poisonous deeds. He's a wicked devil. Hmm? We didn't get this wicked in America because the devil plays nice. He's got wicked deeds. He wants to defile everything, including the church. Why do you think there's so many versions of the Bible? Why do you think there's so many false churches out there? Why do you think churches that used to preach the gospel now are in the entertainment business? Because the devil's poisonous. How many have heard this? Well, if we just start doing this, we'll gather more young people. You ever heard of that? You know what to gather young people? Getting their parents saved and them raising them up to hear the Word of God and they hear the Word of God, they'll get saved. Let me help you with something. Younger people's hearts are more tender than older people. Huh? Just present them with Jesus. They'll flock to Him. We see that around here. You ever see our kids when they come back from camp? They're fired up. Why? Because they've been preached to. They've been in an atmosphere of preaching and singing and worship, and they can't wait to come back and share it with mom and dad. Amen. Why can't mom and dad get fired up for God and can't wait to share it with little Johnny and little Susie? Hmm? Well, oh, if we just lessen up right here, we'll gain the young people. Well, that don't work, so they lessen up a little more. Then they lessen up a little more. They lessen up a little more until everybody leaves, and they've got to close the doors. Uh why? Because they lessened up. Who do you think caused them to lessen up? That poisonous, sorry, no good devil. This is what I want you to understand. Yes, he's patient. Yes, he's persistent. Yes, he's proficient. Yes, he's poisonous. But the devil, for all of his skill and all of his artwork and all of his trophies and all that he's done, he's pretentious. The reason he got cast out of heaven in the first place because he's pretentious. You say, what does that mean, preacher? Well, he's blinded with arrogance. Any sorry, no good devil that would try to bring down the darling son of God, he's an arrogant devil. Any devil that in eternity past thought he could usurp the authority of the Lord and take over the Lord's throne, he's an arrogant devil. And the problem is he's so arrogant he thinks you and I are no match for him. And in our flesh we're not. Uh, but what he is yet to figure out, uh, if we can get on our knees uh, and get a hold of the God of heaven, uh, the God of heaven shows up uh, and the devil has to flee. Uh, he's so arrogant he thinks we're no match for him. And what he hadn't figured out is we realize that we're no match for him. But he's no match for our heavenly father. He is blinded by arrogance, 
He's brash in his abilities. He is bold. He thinks he can just do whatever he wants to do. You know why? He hasn't had many people stand in his way. It's been a long time since anybody really got in his way. Hmm? So he again, in his arrogance and in his brashness, he's braggered about everything that he can do. And he trusts in his abilities. Because again, he's honed his skills. But what he doesn't know, just like these tares, he's bound by authority. He can only do what the Lord allows him to do. And when you and I realize that, and we just stay close to the shepherd, the enemy stays far away. Let me help you something. What the shepherd wants to do is get you away from the fold. When he isolates you, he can intimidate you, and he can dominate you. But when you're in the fold, and you're close to the master, he don't want to have anything to do with you. You want to see revival happen? Just stay close to the master. You want the enemy to stay off your back and stay away from your house? Stay quiet around your place? Stay close to the master. Because... Hmm? Colonel, when he gets to looking at you, and all of a sudden he just looks a little bit beside you and he sees the master, he said, no, <laughs> I'll go this way. Because he's bound by authority. Why do you think the Bible says draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. There's the secret. He is bound by authority and you and I can have victory when? We just get close to the master. And getting close to the master will cause our focus to be what it should be. And when our focus is what it should be, look out, revival just might fall. My dear friends, the enemy's hard at work, but that don't mean he can have victory. He can only have the victory if we allow him to. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we build ourselves up on our most holy faith and draw nigh to God and trust in the Lord and walk with the Lord and seek the Lord and hang out with the Lord, guess who won't bother you? Oh, he might try to deter you to get you away from the Lord. Don't let him. Just stay close to God. Revelation 1, 6, God hath made us kings and priests. God has given you everything you need to rule and reign over your flesh. It's called the Word of God. But He's also made you a priest where you can go directly to the throne of God. Tame help in time of need. So my dear friends, you have everything you need to stay in the will of God. The real task is will we? Will we stay close to God? Will we draw close to the Master? Will we get close to God? Because the sorry no good devil, Brother Ray, will slip a little thought in your, your ear. You can never get close to God. Miss Lisa, you can't get close to God. Look at all your inabilities. Look at how small you are. Jesus really don't care for you. He cares for other people more than he does you. You, you just, you can never get close to God. And you start listening to that sorry, slick, no good devil. And guess what? As the Lord is walking, you're not walking with him. Because you're listening to the devil. And next thing you know, he'll have you in his clutches. Because you believed his lies. He's the father of lies. Who loves you more than Jesus? Nobody. Nobody. Who died for you? Jesus. Who has you engrafted in the palm of his hand? Jesus. Who is willing to move heaven and earth for you? Jesus. Uh, who is the Almighty? Jesus. Uh, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings? Jesus. Uh, who is for you? Jesus. Uh, who cares about you more than anybody else and says... 
Cast all your cares on him, uh, for he careth for you, Jesus. Uh, Jesus cares. Uh, Jesus loves you. Uh, in Jesus, you are somebody. Uh, you're robed in his righteousness. Uh, you've been justified by faith. Uh, you've been made a joint heir to his throne. Uh, everything Jesus owns, you own in Jesus. Uh, don't let the devil rob you of that. Uh, don't let the devil tell you you're nobody. Uh, yes, your flesh. Uh, is wicked and rotten and yes uh, in your flesh you are nobody uh, but in Christ Jesus uh, you're one of his uh, you're in the family of God uh, you are of a royal priesthood uh, a chosen generation uh, you are of that peculiar people uh, you are somebody uh, so just hang out with Jesus. Uh, just seek Jesus. Uh, just love on Jesus. Uh, just believe in Jesus. Uh, and watch the enemy flee. Uh, but he only flee for a season. You can't get arrogant. You can't get thinking you are somebody. In your flesh you're not. But in Christ you are. So keep Jesus as the apple of your eye and watch the enemy and the tares head to their destruction my dear friend just be wheat last time I checked wheat don't grow sideways or downward wheat grows upward you know why it grows upward it's pointing to the one that grew it it's pointing to Jesus just produce the fruit that Jesus wants you to produce and just be all you can be for God and the enemy oh the enemy he'll lose ground every day that you're walking with Jesus we may not be able to change the world but we can live for Jesus we may not be able to do anything in our own power but we can sow some seed and we can walk with Jesus. We can be all Jesus would have us to be. And by the way, if you're what Jesus would have you to be, you're the most successful person on, on the planet. There's nothing, nothing greater than being what Jesus would have you to be. So, well, Jesus didn't call me to preach. That doesn't no matter. That matter. Jesus didn't give me the gift to sing. That doesn't matter. Jesus doesn't let me do this. And Jesus doesn't. Just be what Jesus wants you to be. Just be what he's created you to be. Don't worry about anybody else. That's part of the devil's tactics. Uh, get you looking here. Get you looking there. Get you looking there. Get you And not looking at Jesus. Uh, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, just serve Jesus. Uh, just love on Jesus. Uh, hey, and he'll help you. Uh, let me give you this. I'll be done. Of all the disciples, there were 11 of them around him. That were absolutely amazed that one of them, the 12th one, was going to betray the Lord. And they began to ask, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? By the way, it's not a bad thing to question the Lord. Are you in the will of God? Lord, is it I hindering revival? God, is it I hindering you moving? God, is it I? It's not a bad thing to ask the Lord those kind of questions. Yeah. But Peter looked at John. He said, hey, John, ask him who it is. John was the only one who didn't say, Lord, is it I? Other than Judas, we don't know what he, he had to say. But John didn't ask him because John's over there leaning on the bosom of the Lord. John's right up next to the heartbeat of God. John's the disciple whom Jesus loved. John knew he wasn't going to betray him because he loved him so much. Huh? And can I say, Peter said, John, ask him who it is. And the Lord said, Lord, who is it? And the Lord told him. He said, it's the same one that's dipping sop with me right now. Can I say, when you're up close to the heartbeat of God... You're not the one that's going to betray him. Try and get that close in the next week and weeks to come. Get in the Bible like you haven't gotten the Bible in a long time. Get in your prayer closet like you've not been in a long time. Get some good godly music going on in your heart like you haven't had in a long time. 
You just get as close to Jesus as you can, and you watch and see what Jesus does this week. The only one who can bring, allow a revival to come to you is you. As I promise you, God's going to bring it. Will we have it? Will we receive it? And friend, if you're over here somewhere listening to the devil, you're not going to get revived. But if you are up next to his heartbeat, and you're walking with him, and you're seeking him, and you're hungering, does he not say, seek and ye shall find? Do everything you can to combat your flesh this week and seek the Lord. And wait and see what happens next week, neighbor. Hmm? Don't let the devil rob you of what God's got for you because he's got something for you. And the devil's going to kick and fight and huff and puff. But you know that one little pig he built that brick house, he couldn't blow them walls down. You know how to keep the sorry no good wolf away? Build your life on this. Build your life on Jesus. He can't blow him down. Don't let revival pass you. I said it the last one. But the Lord has given us a space of grace. This may be the last revival meeting we ever get to have before Jesus comes. Wouldn't you want to be revived when Jesus comes? This might be our last opportunity. Get all you can get. Because he may have something big for you to do. He may have you some seed sowing days ahead. Just get all you can get. Because there's coming a time the enemy's going to get his due. Well, don't you want to have something to lay at Jesus' feet because of how good he's been to you? Oh, just walk with Jesus. Just seek Jesus. Quit listening to the sorry, no good devil. Don't let him sow tares in your life. Let the Lord produce wheat in your life. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, once you come, Miss Tina, you come. Pick out a song. Why they're picking out a song? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I pray you'd put a hedge about each of our lives. I pray you'd bind the sorry devil and the powers of hell. I know he's going to fight and do all he can to discourage people during revival. God, give us victory. God, give us a reckoning with Almighty God. Help us to have true revival these coming days God help those that are on the fringe of getting away from the fold to not drift farther but to get to the master help us to hang out close to the master help us to get up close to your heartbeat help us to seek your face help us to truly hunger and thirst for righteousness these days Lord bless these thy people help those ones that have been facing obstacles and hindrances and feel like they're, they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. God, help them. Give them victory. God, bear them up. God, do something for them. And God, I do pray if there be any in our midst unsaved tonight, that Lord, they wouldn't listen to the lies of the devil, but they'd listen to the drawing of the Holy Ghost and they'd come and get saved. <coughs> bless in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.